Meet the honey badger, reputed to be the meanest animal on earth. Standing only a foot high, this bundle of fur, claws and teeth has been known to fend off lions and leopards, survive the poisonous bite of a cobra, and some say even attack animals as large as a buffalo. One winter's night, a shot resounded across the African bush. A mother honey badger died. Beside her lay a helpless six-week-old cub. Stone Hills Wildlife Sanctuary lies 75 kilometers from Bulawayo in Zimbabwe's majestic Matobo Hills. It is owned by biologist and wildlife photographer Richard Peake. Jake's standing up at the moment. And his wife, Buki. We set up Stone Hills as an educational and a research center. And then we began taking in orphaned and injured animals, rehabilitating them and releasing them back into the wild. Both Rich and I believe very strongly that if it's at all possible, every wild animal should have its freedom. And for this, Stone Hills is a perfect environment. Covering six and a half thousand acres, this rocky wilderness provides sanctuary to a wide variety of animals. But would it be a suitable home for an orphaned honey badger? reckoned to be the toughest animal in Africa. Of course, we'd heard all the stories about honey badgers, and we were worried that this little chap would grow up into his terrible reputation. Despite his reputation, Badger arrived at Stone Hills utterly defenseless. At six weeks old, he could hardly walk, and he slept in a cardboard box next to the peak's bed. His coat was plastered with diarrhea, so Bookie gave him his first bath. Far from being a ferocious beast, he was totally dependent on his new family and desperate for comfort and love. Badger had been saved from certain death in the wild and in so doing had inherited a whole new family. This included brothers Nigel and David as well as Nandi the Labrador. Over the years, Nandi had shared her home with plenty of orphans. But despite this one being both smelly and boring, he seemed to be getting more than his fair share of attention. Although Badger enjoyed his bottle, he began to display an allergic reaction to the milk formula. And when his fur began falling out and sores developed on his belly, the Peaks decided to change his diet and offer him mints instead. Suddenly, little Badger turned into a ferocious carnivore, so possessive of his food that he even attacked the spoon. Although he was still relatively helpless, the Peaks began to wonder if this was their first unsettling glimpse into Badger's true nature. No, 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 don't you. Were they indeed raising hell? Badger was given David's old room as his den, and he was showered with attention from his new family. Wild honey badgers are essentially solitary animals. This mother and cub were filmed in the southern Kalahari. Mother badgers conceal their cubs in an underground den for their first three months. And no wonder. The cub gets into so much trouble that he must stay close to his mother for up to two years, watching and learning from her until he is old enough to fend for himself. Because badgers are nocturnal and very secretive, little is known about them. So what would his mother have taught him? And how would a family of mere humans educate a badger and teach him how to survive in the wild? Honey badgers find most of their prey underground. As soon as badger began to move around outside, he instinctively began to dig. He took a long time to become steady on his feet. Badger's adoring new family soon came to understand that honey badgers have only two speeds, on and off. Bookie and David began the young badger's education by taking him on morning walks.
At first, he wasn't terribly keen and far preferred to be carried. But even at such a young age, he was beginning to display an intense curiosity about everything around him. Nonetheless, life away from the safety of home was still daunting. And like any young badger in the wild, he kept close to his new mother, constantly calling to remind her not to leave him behind. In southern Africa, honey badgers are a threatened species. Females usually give birth to only a single cub, around once every two years or even longer. They inhabit a harsh environment, and it's believed that no more than half their cubs survive to adulthood, often falling prey to larger predators, starvation, or sometimes to other badgers. And even if a honey badger is lucky enough to reach maturity, he can only expect to live around seven to eight years. This only reinforced the peak's determination to make a success of their cubs' rehabilitation and return to the wild. Not all members of the family were impressed with the latest addition. Mary the bushbuck, obviously well aware of the honey badger's reputation, refused to make friends. Adult badgers are renowned for their single-minded perseverance, whether they are fending off a lion or chasing a cobra into the treetops. Badger was no exception. He approached every challenge with the tenacity and persistence that have made these animals legendary. He investigated everything to see if it was good to play with, eat, or destroy. Honey badgers are members of the mustelid family, related to otters and skunks, and they can emit a foul-smelling secretion from their anal glands as both a defense mechanism and a means of marking territory. Young badger was already staking his claim to his new domain. Holes and burrows would come to play a vital role in badger's life so his family provided a cardboard tunnel for practice. This developed into a wonderful game. After a day of high voltage activity and adventure, Badger was exhausted. While Badger slept in his own room at night, he looked forward to his early morning walks when he was looked upon without much enthusiasm by Stonehill's other inhabitants. Now, at six months old, he was a far more confident explorer. But for all his growing boldness, family continued to be very important. though there were clearly limits as to how far he would follow their example. When threatened, a badger will instinctively present his upper neck where the skin is thickest. And even if an attacker does manage to get a grip on him, he has another trick to play. His skin fits him like a loose rubber suit so he can twist and turn in it to deliver a nasty bite. Badger presented his neck to Nandi during their exhausting games in the garden, which sometimes lasted for hours. These were fun for both of them, but Nandi was unwittingly providing Badger with his first elementary lesson in self-defense. Lessons that might prove critical to Badger's survival in the future. But as much as Badger loved these games, he was just as happy to play on his own. It was time for Badger to learn about the kind of food he would eat in the wild. Snakes are a major item on the honey badger menu. At first he was very suspicious, but once it was still, and with a little encouragement, he discovered that this harmless centipede eater was a gourmet's delight. Stone Hills is home to a variety of poisonous snakes. Badger could expect, at some point, 
to cross paths with the deadly black mambas, puff adders, and cobras that would share his home in the wild. So it was vital to instill caution in him at an early age. This came in the shape of a mildly venomous, highly aggressive herald snake that the peaks found in their bedroom. Most animals will die from a serious snake bite, but honey badgers seem to have evolved with a remarkable ability to cope with the venom. It is thought that they may build up a resistance slowly through a process called envenomation. Or it may be that they are born with complete protection from poisons. No one knows for certain. Having graduated from smaller snakes, badger met a much larger one, a young python. And this snake had even more spring in it. Now that he was older, Bookie introduced Badger to Mary again, and this time he was a lot more confident. She, however, had not changed her mind. She had no intention of making friends. Especially now that Badger, rapidly succumbing to the insatiable curiosity of his kind, was chasing after anything that moved. Right from the start, Badger had attitude. He took himself off to meet the neighbors, and he wasn't afraid of anyone, not even large animals like the wildebeest, kudu, and the sable antelope. They didn't pose too much of a threat, but when it came to making the acquaintance of a zebra whose mighty kick can kill a lion, the peaks looked on with their hearts in their mouths. Much as they wanted to intervene, there were some lessons that their cub would learn only by first-hand experience. But it's all good sport to a honey badger, voted by the Guinness Book of Records as the most fearless animal in the world. After a little reassurance from his family, he was ready to meet an eland, the largest antelope in Africa, equipped with piercing horns. Badger, badger, come back. Even after Richard and Bookie called him off, he was prepared to go back again and again. But it was the encounter with the giraffe that might well have been Badger's last. Before the peaks could stop him, he was sniffing at a foot that was nearly as big as himself. That blow to the head would have killed most animals. But thanks to his thick skull, it probably gave young Badger no more than a slight headache. Even the toughest animal in Africa sometimes needs the sympathy of his mother. Poor Badgie. What a horrible thing to happen. Honey badgers find most of their food underground and they can dig for hours in the toughest soil, aided by their long, powerful claws. Which are equally as useful for probing into trees. In the wild, the mother honey badger does the majority of the digging with the same tenacious attitude she applies to everything else. Babies just get in the way. His family worried that Badger might one day become stuck in a hole. But thanks to his flexibility and his loose skin, he could squeeze out of places that seemed far too small for him. In African tradition, the honey badger is more feared than a lion or a leopard. 
So Kanye, a research assistant at Stonehills, was very nervous at their first meeting. But so was Badger. Come on, Badge, come make friends. Come on, Kanye's got a treat for you. Kanye was amazed that this legendary animal was so gentle. Day by day, he bribed his way into Badger's heart with crickets and grasshoppers. Uh, I never thought I'd make friends with a badger. It's just wonderful. It wasn't long before the Peaks realized how vulnerable Badger was, even in the sanctuary of Stone Hills. On one of their walks, he wandered off and, tempted by some very interesting smells, became stuck in a cave where a leopard had stashed its kill. Luckily for Badger, Richard and Kanye rescued him before the leopard returned. But he was bound to do the same thing again, and his family wouldn't always be there to protect him. Besides leopards, lions and hyenas, humans are honey badger enemy number one. Badgers will sometimes raid villages like this one near Stone Hills for easy prey, and the villagers will think nothing of killing a badger to protect their livestock. More determined than ever to raise Badger into a self-sufficient adult, the Peaks continued his daily walks, which were now becoming a bit of a drag. Badger would cling to their feet so tightly that he was almost impossible to dislodge. He was like an octopus. No sooner had you removed one foot than another one took its place. He was also a dedicated ankle biter. But although his teeth and claws could have inflicted some very nasty injuries, he never intentionally hurt anyone. Badger never bored of his little game, which may well have been practice for bringing down larger prey. Although Badger was preparing for a lonely life in the wild, he was still very sociable. On a first meeting, people shake hands, but Badger preferred to meet feet, and once introduced, he never forgot them. All Badger's new friends were taught to sit and wait quietly until he approached them and inspected their feet. For the so-called meanest animal in the world, Badger was certainly receiving and enjoying a lot of attention. In the chaos of his bedroom, he surged out from under the tarpaulin like a killer whale, snapping at whomever was brave enough to wiggle their fingers at him. His family were quite prepared to amuse him for hours. As he grew older, both his energy levels and curiosity only seemed to grow, often at the expense of farm equipment. There was always something new to find, investigate, and if possible, destroy. Even in the garage, everything had to be tested to see if it was good to eat or play with. And forbidden fruit is always more tempting, even if it's only an old tractor seat. Who knows what might be lurking inside? Badger was determined to find out. When Badger appointed himself as farm mechanic, the family became a little more anxious. And when he began merrily chewing up the carpets and skirting boards in his room, his parents knew it was time to take action. You're not a bad badger. Surely you don't mean me. Before he totally destroyed their home, and while he was still dependent, they needed to provide him with a home of his own. The wire fencing for his cage had to be sunk deep into the ground and roofed on the top to prevent him digging or climbing out. He had a concrete bunker, a paddling pool and plenty of toys. The plan was that he would stay out of trouble in his new home and get lots of exercise on his morning and evening walks with the family. But at eight months old, Badger had his own ideas. Instead of staying in the cage, he decided to choose his own daytime retreats in caves or ant bear holes, where he would hide up until the family came to collect him for his evening walks. Veggie, Veggie, wake up. Come on, we know you're in there. Sometimes he was so deeply asleep that it took ages to coax him out. Thank you. 
Badger was entering a new phase of his development. With his newfound confidence, he no longer ran behind his parents. Now he liked to lead the way, although he always followed Nandi after interesting smells. He could never pass by an interesting hole, and nothing is too small, too far, or too deep for a badger. His bottle brush tail was a barometer of Badger's mood. When he was feeling especially confident, it was held high, usually when a family member was close by. His tail hung low when he was unsure of himself or when he was exposed out on the open felt. As honey badgers are mostly nocturnal, the family began to take Badger out for walks at night. But even at nine months old, he was becoming more and more adventurous often disappearing into places where his family couldn't follow. Things became even more worrying when one night he discovered the remains of a kudu killed by a leopard. Possession being nine-tenths of the law of the badgers, he tucked in, quite unconcerned that the leopard could turn up at any moment. It's not surprising that badger cubs need their mother's protection for so long. Badger likes to come and hide up in these hills with lots of deep caves. It's no wonder we never see wild badgers. Then one day, the inevitable happened. The peak set out for their afternoon walk and headed for the cave where they had left Badger that morning. He was nowhere to be seen. They checked all his favorite caves and burrows. They called for him and walked for miles, but to no avail. Badger had never spent a night in the bush on his own and the peak's concern mounted as the hours went by. To make matters worse, they knew a leopard had killed a bush pig in that area only two days before. They were starting to lose hope. If a leopard had taken Badger, they would almost certainly never find his remains. In the early hours of the next morning, the family gave up the search and went home. At first light, they went back to the area where Badger had last been seen. Badger. They called, and then to their huge relief, a small, sleepy face looked out of the hole. We began to worry that we might lose Badger, particularly at night, and if he got into trouble, we wouldn't be there to help. So we decided to have him implanted with a radio transmitter, which would be far less restrictive than a collar. The operation was quick and simple, and it took little time for Badger to recover and get into mischief again. Honey badgers are born jugglers and are naturally dexterous, capable of using all four feet at once. Each afternoon, the family went out in search of badger, now armed with radio tracking equipment. He must have assumed that his human family also had his excellent sense of smell, because in these early days, prior to his wild wanderings, they always knew where to find him. Now the ticking of the receiver told them exactly where he was, even if he had moved to a different place. It was always a relief to see him late each afternoon. His adopted family had no idea what he had got up to during the day. His daily walks continued, and so did his education. Badgers take some time to acquire their climbing skills. But some of their prey, including snakes and birds, live in trees. So the peaks hid badgers' favorite food on branches. Getting up trees seemed easy enough. Getting down was the problem.
David gave him some climbing demonstrations, with mother usually on hand to come to the rescue. But not always. Honey badgers have to learn the hard way. <laughs> but even Badger saw the funny side of it. After months and months of practice, he finally got it right and retrieved his reward, an apple. Like all Mustelids, Badger was essentially a carnivore, but strangely enough, he loved Beta. apples and begged for a piece at the end of every morning walk. Badger food also lurks under rocks, so when the cub was young, that's where the peaks hid his food. He learned very quickly. Although a badger's eyesight is not good, he has an excellent sense of smell. Having graduated from insects to reptiles, Badger was developing a growing taste for a variety of prey. He also began to display a remarkable intelligence and ingenuity that amazed his family. As Badger got more experienced, he began lifting rocks and letting them fall onto the prey that was hiding underneath. This had the effect of stunning them and made them easier to catch. It was incredibly intelligent behaviour. It indicated to me that he was using rocks as tools. Then Badger found a legawan, a water monitor, at the end of an evening walk. He could smell it in a hole in the riverbank and spent at least an hour digging it out. Badger knew that if it slipped away from him, the legawan would disappear under the water. So once he had caught it by the tail, he dragged it 50 meters away from the river and into the long grass. He was clearly very pleased with himself and invited the family to join in his game before he settled down to devour his kill. At last he had learned to control his formidable claws, which would one day grow up to four centimeters long. The longer they grew, the further he could reach and the better he could climb. Now he could reach all sorts of tricky places in search of food. His claws were strong enough to take his whole weight even on a vertical rock. And of course, at the summit of any achievement, he deserved plenty of praise. The fires that rage over the African landscape often sear off large shards of rock, and Badger soon realized that these provided excellent hiding places for prey. By balancing on his head with its thick skull, he could free up his front legs to lever them off. In the wild, a mother honey badger shows her cub how to catch prey. But Badger, through a combination of instinct and experience, had to learn for himself. One day, Badger discovered his first tortoise. He was fascinated and spent ages trying to work out how to get it out of its shell. No one could get it away from him. 
But later that afternoon, Bookie arrived, having spent a month away from home. And for a few minutes, the tortoise was forgotten. It was amazing that this essentially solitary creature should be so bonded to his human family. He had a special relationship with each one of them. I've known and loved a lot of animals, but Badger was different. I felt I could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. Brother David was nothing but fun. And Badger would follow him anywhere. Older brother Nigel was away at university much of the time, but when he was home, he was prepared to play games whenever Badger demanded. When Badger was just over a year old, Richard's daughter Nikki returned to Stone Hills for Christmas. Although he had never met Nikki before, Badger immediately recognized that she was part of the family. Take my hat, please, somebody. Badger's decided to take my hat. <laughs> He's very cross now. <laughs> Badger had developed a fondness for hats and eventually managed to get hold of Richard's. By now, everyone knew well Badger's golden rule. What's mine is mine, especially if it belongs to someone else. Those who broke that rule paid the price. But this was Richard's favorite hat and he wanted it back. Usually, the only way the Peaks could get something back from Badger was to ignore him, but that wasn't working this time. Then Kanya made what could have been a painful mistake, but he wasn't brave enough to keep the hat for long. Badger finally forgave him, but it took some time. Badger was growing up remarkably fast, and it was clear that Nandi no longer had the upper hand. Badger was, in many ways, beginning to outgrow his family. But was he ready to meet his own kind? One day, Kanya noticed tracks made by other wild honey badgers on Stone Hills. Badger was intrigued. In the wild, honey badgers use their scent glands and feces to mark their territories and leave messages for one another. Their middens act like a sort of hitching post where fun-loving lady badgers may advertise for attractive males with similar interests. But as a juvenile, Badger merely left a little message of his own. Then he followed their trail for miles, fluffing himself up to appear larger and more intimidating than he really was. As important as it was for the cub to be able to interact with other badgers, it was also a remarkably dangerous prospect for an orphaned cub. They may kill one of their own they don't recognize, especially if he is male. In the wild, Badger would have learned appropriate responses from his mother, but this was something no human could teach him. Rather than worry about what they could not teach Badger, the Peaks refocused their attention on what they could. When he was first offered a honeycomb as a cub, Badger turned up his nose. And it wasn't until he was well over a year old that he suddenly began to take an interest. Perhaps he was ready to live up to his Latin name of Melivora capensis, the devourer of honey. Wild badgers will go to great lengths to raid beehives, often suffering hundreds of stings in the process, to which they are not totally immune. 
Normally, they will run away when the pressure becomes too great. But badgers who have become trapped in hives have sometimes been found stung to death. Luckily for Badger, his first find was the hive of the stingless Mopani bees, so he was able to rip it open without retribution. It has been said that honey badgers prefer the larvae to the honey. But when Richard offered Badger an active hive, he definitely preferred the honey. In fact, he gorged himself and then had to take one of his infrequent drinks. Now that he had dealt with harmless bees, the Peaks introduced Badger to a more dangerous menu item, a slightly venomous rock scorpion. Not since his encounters with snakes had he been confronted with a potential meal that dared to fight back. No one is certain whether or not badgers are totally immune from scorpion venom. One way or the other, badger did not seem perturbed. Soon, he was able to find scorpions for himself and deal with them far more efficiently than he did on his first encounter. With his incredible sense of smell, Badger could locate scorpions and other prey as deep as 40 centimeters under the ground. When he dug up a poisonous centipede, it managed to bite Badger, who promptly bit it back. Using his incredible sense of smell, he could track prey over a long distance. One day, Badger picked up the scent of a Schlegel's blind snake which he tracked for some distance through long grass before eventually finding it alongside a termite mound. Using his claws to hold it still, he made short work of this harmless snake. Badger was continually expanding the list of things he could eat and the places he could find them. Badgers are not stealth hunters and acquire most of their prey by trapping it in holes or burrows. Badger found every hole irresistible and had to explore it, no matter how large and irate its occupants. It was disappointing that the warthogs didn't share Badger's sense of humor, but no matter how much it hurt, he never stopped trying to make friends. Honey badgers have a bad habit of sticking their noses or their bottoms into other people's business. Badger had to learn that when a porcupine says no, he really means it. It was a painful lesson, but Badger finally got the point and promptly ate it. Once again, he had to learn the hard way. When the porcupine was out of its hole, Badger lost interest. Although most of Badger's subterranean adventures seemed like fun and games, when he retrieved a large python skin from down a hole, it became apparent that he needed to exercise a little more caution while exploring. This enormous snake, easily capable of squeezing the life out of a honey badger, had often been seen on stone hills. Luckily, badger had not yet made its acquaintance. In case he had not learned to be respectful of larger snakes, Richard decided to reinforce badger's earlier lessons. He caught another python and introduced it to him. 
This snake was smaller than the resident Goliath, but big enough to provide a valuable lesson. At first, Badger was cautious about approaching the largest snake he had ever seen. Then, his curiosity got the better of him. But a single strike from the snake convinced him to keep his distance. To the relief of both the python and the peaks. But that relief was short-lived. A few months later, Badger came face to face with a Mozambique spitting cobra, and the family had to stand back and watch him helplessly. They didn't try to call Badger off. He needed every bit of his concentration to avoid getting bitten or spat at by this nervous and very aggressive snake. But luckily, Badger's early lessons paid off, and although he followed the cobra into a tree, he kept a safe distance from it. This hair-raising experience didn't faze Badger at all. But the same couldn't be said for his adopted family, who were beginning to realize just what parenting the most fearless animal in the world was all about. October brought oppressive heat to Stone Hills, and with it, Badger's first taste of an African drought. As the earth became drier, starved of rain, Badger found it increasingly difficult to dig for food in the hard, dry earth, even with his powerful claws. But badgers are opportunists. When Badger discovered a plover's nest, the eggs proved a welcome addition to his wide range of food. Day after day, the sky remained a cloudless blue. Only the cassia tree was in bloom, while other plants and animals simply waited for the rain. In such harsh years, the peaks put out game cubes for some of the hungrier animals. With the drought comes the ever-present threat of wildfires, and the peaks are always on the lookout for the telltale plumes of white smoke amongst the hills. These fires are often started by honey hunters, who smoke the bees out of holes in trees. When it's done, the fires come around on from marshlands and it's creeping around again. So if you could just get hold of Kanye, and for him to go and collect the other guys and all the beaters and then just get ready and just, just wait for me. I'm actually going to come back at the moment, you know, right now. If not caught in time, a fire can reduce the felt to ash and destroy the last of the animal's natural food in a matter of hours. Everyone on Stone Hills and the neighbors too will turn out to fight fires that can sometimes last for days. It could well be a matter of life or death for the thousands of animals in the sanctuary. But once October had passed, the clouds began to build and the felt began to stir. Tremendous thunderstorms rolled over the hills. And at last, the rains arrived. Within a week, the bush came to life. Bringing with it relief for the animals and a profusion of wild flowers and insects. Badger, however, showed no botanical appreciation. The toxic bulb of this ox killer plant was once used by the bushman as an arrow poison and will kill or sicken any animal that eats it. Unperturbed, Badger tore at it frantically, convinced that there was something interesting inside.
Under the influence of the rains, the earth softened, and Badger once again could easily dig for prey. He found a freshly dug hole. Somebody was at home. Somebody far larger than himself who showered him with soil. But badgers always give as good as they get. Ant bears also have powerful claws and are immensely strong. They are loath to leave their holes during the day unless, of course, they are rudely evicted. Badger trotted five kilometers after this one, just for fun. The rains brought a bountiful supply of food for Badger. He dug crickets out of the soft soil. And sun spiders, which have enormous jaws for their size. But that didn't impress him. Stings, pincers, and claws are no deterrent to a hungry honey badger. Badger's earlier attempts at mouse hunting had proved largely unsuccessful. But as he persevered, he learned that rodents have several entrances and exits to their underground homes. Using a remarkable bit of lateral thinking, he worked out how to block up their escape routes by filling them with earth and covering them with leaves. And when he had blocked up all but one hole and the mouse was trapped, he was able to dig down and capture it at leisure. The rains had replenished the rivers and pools, but Badger had an instinctive aversion to deep water. His kind are not natural swimmers, and they cannot float. But when he was a baby, Bookie tempted him into the water with her sandal, and that he couldn't resist. There he is, the prize this time, the trophy. As he grew older, he grew more courageous, and the promise of food was always an incentive, especially if it was close to the bank. Good boy, Badger. <laughs> but although Badger was an excellent retriever, he always avoided deep water. And with good reason, even the most fearless animal in the world is no match for a crocodile. Badger discovered that toads were edible, even though most of them carry a poison under the skin that tastes truly horrible. He quickly learned to scrape them on the ground and rake them with his claws to release the toxins. But with the arrival of the rains and the many pools they left in their wake, he developed a far more effective means of making toads more palatable. Much to the peak's amazement, he carried them to the water and washed off the poison. Badger again illustrated his ingenuity when he found this hinged tortoise. It looked appetizing, but how would he extract it from its shell? Initially, he tried scraping it across the rocks. But when that didn't work, Badger dragged the tortoise to a nearby pool. Then he displayed more of his incredible intelligence. He tested the depth of the water and attempted to drown it. But his patience soon ran out, so he took the tortoise off for the day to think up another plan. 
thanks to the protection of his adopted family, Badger had grown from a helpless infant into an able young predator, equipped with a variety of hunting skills. But at just over a year old, he was still a juvenile, far from ready for a life in the wild. What lay ahead? Would he ever become truly wild and self-sufficient? The Peaks had cherished every moment in Badger's company. He had given them a magical opportunity of seeing the world through the eyes of a honey badger. And what a place it was, filled with excitement, danger, and for them, extraordinary discoveries. Not about the meanest animal on earth, but a loving, humorous, and truly remarkable little animal.